Aloha, and welcome to a special set of shows on love and dating in Hawaii in the lead up to Valentine's Day. I am your host, Raya Salter. Now, around this time each year, most folks are thinking about how to spend Valentine's Day with a special someone. If you are single, this can mean making plans with a new beau or deciding on a night out with your girl or guy friends. Inevitably, thoughts are gonna turn to romance and dating. How can we turn that single status on Facebook into I'm in relationship, married, or even, you know what, we'll take it's complicated. Here to help us figure this out is Ami Allen, Vice President of Matchmaking Hawaii, Hawaii's longest running dating service. Welcome, Ami. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, Ami. We are so glad to have some professional help <laughs> to help us figure yes. out what folks can do who are looking for love here mm -hmm. um, in Hawaii. So first, maybe you could tell us about yourself and a bit about your background. Okay, um, I was born in Japan and uh, but grew up in Montreal, Canada. Oh, okay. And I went to high school and college back in Japan, but I've been in Hawaii for about 20 years. Okay. And I've been with Matchmaking Hawaii for about 10. Fantastic. So you actually have a wealth of knowledge. Absolutely. So we're really yes. excited to talk to you about your um, about your uh, about your profession and your experience. Mm -hmm. But first, why don't you go ahead and tell us a bit about Matchmaking Hawaii and the work that you do? Okay, um, it's a company. We are in our 23rd year. Wow. So it is the longest running and largest matchmaking company in Hawaii, and we assist people who are looking for a long-term relationship. Uh, the founder and owner of the company, Rachel. Ke Mm -hmm. um, of course, she's the only one with the 23 years of experience, but she comes to the office every day and um, she's very much hands-on and um, that's kind of what we do. We find love for people. Oh, that is fantastic. It must feel, does it feel good? It must feel good to have that Absolutely. be sort of your mission and what yes. you do professionally. Mm -hmm. um, so what types of folks use your service? Um, singles. Um, people in their late 20s up to their 60s. Of course, the majority tends to be in their 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. um, but really of all ages and you know, just single people who are looking for a long-term relationship. Oh, excellent. So to help us understand why someone may choose to use a dating service. Mm -hmm. I think, first of all, they're not meeting new people. Mm. And you know, maybe once in a while or one to two maybe potentials in one year is not really a good number to start with. So they're just not meeting new people. Another reason is because they've tried other avenues and they've been unsuccessful, so they do come to us. Where, where do folks hear about uh, dating services? Some people, they just Google us or they hear it from a friend. The majority of our uh, clients come to us through referrals, actually. Oh, that's interesting. That makes sense mm -hmm. as well. Yes. So what could someone expect when they come to Match Making Hawaii? They mm -hmm. come to sit down and, and open up their personal lives sure. for your help. Um, we had a slogan that we were using in our advertising for a few years ago. It was real person, real date. So pretty much that sums it up. That's what people can expect, you know, to meet real people who match their preferences mm -hmm. and go on real dates with, you know, people, the kind of people that they wanted to always meet. Yeah, that actually sounds like something I would love to experience as well. <laughs> so what's a typical day for you at the office in this um, sort of profession of, of love and matchmaking? Um, the first thing in the morning is always the feedback calls. Um, when people go on a date uh, through our service, the following day, or if it's a weekend, then the Monday morning is when they give us a call and they let us know how the date went, what did they do, where did they go, you know, what are the things they liked about the person, what are some of the things that they had some concerns with, mm -hmm. or any questions for us. So we go through that. Um, after that's done, it's definitely the analysis of the information that we've received. Oh, that's interesting. And Could you tell us what, tell us about, you know, how do you guys look at the information and judge whether or not someone's been successful? And well, I think it's not just a clear, you know, successful or unsuccessful. And I think everyone is really trying. But, you know, because men and women are so fundamentally different, sometimes the communication is like this. 
And when this happens, it has really has nothing to do with, you know, whether you know she has so many qualities that he's looking for, or whether he's a really sincere, amazing guy. You know, it's it's just the communication. And so we. So the, it, so I guess so that so I guess both of the folks who are going on mm -hmm. the couple of cup part of parts of the couple are your clients. Yes. So you actually see both sides. Absolutely. Oh, that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. And we're able to see whether we can s assist in any way to for it to go to a second date, um, to clarify anything, or, you know, you're overthinking it, you know, what are you talking about, you know, or whether it's just giving somebody a little bit more of a nudge, or, you know, whether it's, you know, something else. That is so interesting. It's sort of, I feel like, um, so often, what, you know, the singles come back from a date mm -hmm. and they're sort of, their mind is full of those questions, mm -hmm. like, did she like me? Mm -hmm. Did he like me? Does do we want to see each other right. again? And, and why half did he ask me out again? Right. <laughs> and half of it may be that doubt from you know thinking you know half of it is you're thinking, uh -huh. how did I feel about this mm -hmm. person? And then the other half you're thinking, what is this person thinking of me? Sure. And often people sort of can be tongue tied about mm -hmm. how to bridge that gap. So yes. that's fascinating. And gosh, it's it could seem like really helpful to have somebody who can kind of. Mm -hmm could say, um, excuse me, sir, I actually I don't think she wants to see you again, mm -hmm. or you're wrong, this person really, really liked right. you, they just felt nervous. Right. Do you, um, do you feel like that happens? I mean, that must happen, It yes? does happen a lot, and it usually comes from misunderstanding. Misunderstanding an action, or something he or she said, or just kind of overthinking things, or being overly judgmental. Yeah, I think so, that must you know, be right. We so, kind of take that out. <laughs> that, that, that makes all the sense in the world. So please continue. Mm -hmm. After you, then you start your analysis. I mm -hmm. see you at your desk. You've, you, Jane and Bob, and mm -hmm. you're sort of trying to figure out what's going on. So mm -hmm. then what what, and else, then, what you know, is it's it just, you know, accumulating data on that person and who are we going to introduce next to this person and, you know, what advice can we give to this person to make them a better dater or to, you know, kind of really realize what you know what are the really important things that they should be looking for or whatever the situation is and then we of course I have meetings with my boss and then um, the afternoon usually I have a couple of free consultations oh, okay. with prospective clients that's part of my job and then also I you know I am in charge of um, some of the operational aspects of the business too all right so a day in the life of a matchmaker in Hawaii mm -hmm. so 10 years experience I've got to ask mm -hmm. and you're sort of you know, in your view, what's the dating scene like in Hawaii? To be honest with you, I think a lot of people tend to be very conservative with sharing their information. And of course, you know, as a woman, I understand. You, as a woman, you have to be careful of who you share your information with. Um, but when that becomes too much and there's mm. too many walls up, it makes it very difficult for a really nice, sincere guy who has the right intentions to get to know somebody. So, you know, I think that aspect is definitely um, there um, in Hawaii. And I think a lot of people are so focused on, you know, when you meet somebody new, who do you know? Who do we know that we have in common? Uh, interesting. You know, what school did you go to? And those kind of similarities and, you know, trying to find those kind of things in common is not always, you know, conducive to really finding whether you have chemistry with that person. All right, and part of, um, I think, maybe in the same vein, I know coming from New York City, mm -hmm. dating can be really tough, sure. and it has its all, you know, it's, you know, whole TV shows about sort yes. of what it's like being a single person. Um, how about here in Hawaii? Are there any sort of special challenges or, you know, anything mm -hmm. in particular that makes, um, makes it different dating out here? I think, you know, because we are in a much more smaller area geographically, the six degrees of separation mm -hmm. is probably more like two. And because people are very keen to see if whether we have somebody in common, but when they do, because they mostly do, you know, <laughs> you talk to somebody long enough, you're going to have a couple of people in common. And that's just the way things are here. But because like, oh my gosh, you know, you went to, you know, Kaiser. Oh, my brother went to Kaiser. And then, oh, you know Steve. Oh my gosh. And then people start thinking, okay, well, that's a little too close. I can't date her and break up with her. And then what's going to happen to my relationship with Steve? And, you know, there's a lot of repercussions because there's that closeness and because you have, you know, a lot of, you know, you have people in common. Also, you know, um, because it is a small area, 
um, where people meet new people is not always, you know, it's very difficult to meet new people, but you meet people through work or at work. Um, you probably, most people don't really want to go there and make that into a romantic relationship because right. what if, you know, you have the a same. bad breakup, you can't really change jobs and, you know, it's just too small of a place where, you know, you don't really want to keep changing jobs after every right. breakup. Right, <laughs> you know, that would not be, so that's interesting. I'd like to ask a few more questions about that. So I guess, what's, a, what's somebody to do? Like, so the, it, let's take that first instance where, you know, it's the reality and mm -hmm. people, you know, know each other and, you know, in fact, say on Facebook, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, every new Facebook friend I make, mm -hmm. you know, is a second connection to yes. <laughs> literally anyone else I've ever mm -hmm. met. So, I mean, it's, what is one, what is one to do? Is it something that, um, you know, how does one sort of get beyond that? Is it mental? Is it, is it become, a, is it a fear that's justified? Is it, or is it, you know, how does one proceed? I think you, you know, when people are looking for love, there's a kind of, there's a couple of things that's very important. First of all, you have to be open-minded. You know, when you meet somebody new, use your instinct whether you should be sharing information with that person or not. Because if you really think about it and use your instinct, you know whether it's okay or not. And, you know, that gut feeling that mm -hmm. most people ignore sometimes, mm -hmm. no, go with the gut feeling and be open about it and stay positive. And I think those are really important things when, you know, you want things to, to work out. So the... You know, it is, it's a reality. You know, you're kind of stepping out into a, a um, you know, maybe a slightly scary space mm -hmm. and that folks do know each other, but mm -hmm. you just, what I'm hearing you say is you have to stay positive. You have to be uh, willing to take some chances, yes. but you know, trust your instinct and mm -hmm. be careful. And, Absolutely. And you know, be willing to engage in the process. Yes, and I think a lot of people, another thing is, you know, focus on that person's, you know, good things about them. And really try to find, when you meet somebody new, find good things about them and focus on that instead of, you know, too many people, I think, say, okay, well, he's too short, he's too this, or she's too this, she's too that, and just go with the negatives. And it's just not a good way to get to know somebody. All right, so let me then go ahead and ask, what are, um, what are, would you say, the top three challenges that someone may have um, uh, in dating in Hawaii? I think just the sheer aspect of not meeting new people. Um, secondly, um, you know, even the ones that they do meet are not looking for the same kind of relationship that they are. For example, if somebody is a relationship type of person and they're looking for a long-term relationship, they have to be meeting people that want that relationship too. Otherwise, there's, there's no chance of there, love. And there, there's not <laughs> going to be a chance of love. Mm -hmm. All right, and so we are about to take a break. Okay. Um, so uh, we're about to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have more with Ami from Matchmaking Hawaii on ThinkTech. Aloha, my name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association, and our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Hello and welcome back to a special edition of Power Up Hawaii where we're talking about love, dating, and relationships in the lead up to Valentine's Day. And I'm here with Ami from Matchmakers, Matchmaking Hawaii. Did I, did I say that correctly? Yes. Um, and we've been having a fascinating discussion. Mm -hmm. um, she has 10 years experience of bringing couples together and um, has, got, has been sharing some insights and it's been really great. So let's go ahead and jump back into okay. it. Okay. What are some of the, say, the top three mistakes that people make um, when they're looking for love? 
I think um, when you're looking for love, it's probably better that you're not under the influence of alcohol. You want to have a clear mind to really see whether that chemistry is there, and I think that's one mistake that a lot of people do, just looking in the wrong place, you know, places where alcohol is involved. is not conducive to that. You know, actually, that's very interesting because sometimes I think the first thing people want to do is, mm -hmm. is grab a drink. Hey, mm -hmm. let's Pauhana, can we get a drink? Mm -hmm. And it helps sort of take some of the, maybe the nervousness and the mm -hmm. anxiety away. Mm -hmm. um, what, are, what are some things, you know, if, if someone is going to avoid alcohol, uh, what are some things they can do? I, actually, they could go to a bar and, and just order soda. Sure. You know, so you could still, or maybe choose like a non-bar type of environment. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, of course, bars have a nice setting. It's very romantic. There's no reason to have more than one drink. You know, you can have your drink and enjoy the alcohol, but one over, you know, the whole evening is not that bad. And like you said, you can order something else. You can go there and have, you know, poo-poos and, and just enjoy that conversation. It's just being under the influence is just not conducive to having that clarity. That, that from makes, my experience. No, no, that makes all the <laughs> sense in the world because it's like you kind of, I mean, it's, again, it's about a process, you know, mm -hmm. you'll get to that place maybe with someone where sure. you're sort of, you know, if, if that's something that, you know, you're interested mm -hmm. in is, you know, knocking back drinks and relaxing, yes. and be it at the club or at home, mm -hmm. but you kind of have to let yourself get to that place. Yes, and I always tell my clients, like, what if this is your first date with the person you're going to be married to with the rest of your life? You know, what if this is the first date with your wife? you know, this memorable, amazing moment. You know, you don't really want to be <laughs> intoxicated. You don't want to be, yeah, you don't want to be too drunk and maybe behaving in ways that exactly. might be embarrassing. So I think that's excellent advice. What mm -hmm. are some other mistakes that people tend yes. to make? Um, putting, you know, all your eggs in one basket. A lot of people date one person at a time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, comparing is not always a bad thing. If you meet different people, you kind of get to know things about yourself in the process and realize what kind of a person you're comfortable with and, you know, what kind of traits in a person, you know, you respect. So, you know, I think it's okay for people to, to date around and see what's out there. All right, so you people... Know you know, get excited or, or why might somebody put their eggs in one basket? It's they get excited about one person or... I think it's, it's easier. It's exhausting. And they feel that that's the right thing to do. But as long as you're open and honest, that's why it's called dating. It's not, you know, it's very different from being in an exclusive relationship. And I think it's, you know, for a lot of singles, it's the time to really see, you know, what kind of person you want to end up with and what kind of partner you want to be. So what's the most important thing that someone can do, you know, when they're looking for love? Um, you know, like I said, be open-minded, positive, and also, you know, don't have so many non-negotiables, non-negotiable criteria. You know, pick three and everything else, just relax and just let it go. And I think um, when people, you know, are having trouble finding love, it's because they are they have too many non-negotiables and too many criteria and what are what are some of the sort of types of things that's that might be a non-negotiable non you know, somebody may say you know oh it must be the type the amount of money someone makes sure. or they need to look a certain way mm -hmm. or have a, those the type of things that people tend to latch on to sure i think um it's different for men and women men um it's definitely age the woman's mm. age as well as her you know physical beauty mm. definitely physical appearance is a big part of that for women it's age as well as income isn't that interesting? It's, uh, it comes back to the same mm -hmm. things again and again. Um, well, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Valentine's okay. Day. I think that Valentine's Day, actually for singles or for couples, it can mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, it could be very stressful. Yes. You know, you're trying to figure out, you, you don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your advice for singles on Valentine's Day? You know, to be honest, it's just another holiday. Don't stress out and you know, don't have this pressure. Don't compare yourself to other people. It's not a good look. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's know, like it's not a good look. Stressing out is never a good look. No, and you know, comparing and being jealous, it's it's not very attractive. So you know, if you're single, go out, have fun, you know, with your girlfriends or with your friends, and and just have a good time. It's just another day, and you know, who knows? It's just. You know, there's nothing wrong with you. You just haven't met the one, and it could On definitely that particular day. happen tomorrow. It could, it could happen, happen today. <laughs> it could happen today, or it could happen tomorrow. That I think is excellent, excellent advice for uh, single folks. Um, what about? I feel like often, um, and not always, but a woman, particularly if you're in a new sort of relationship or you've mm -hmm. just sort of started dating someone, it can be a nerve-wracking experience. Um, sort of figuring out how to handle the Valentine's Day holiday. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of expectations. Mm -hmm. um, what's a gal to do? Should a, should a woman sort of step back and um, wait for the man to take initiative or, or reach out, or what do you think? I think it depends on the guy that you're with or that you want to be with. First of all, I think having expectations is not a good starting point. You should have no expectations and, you know, be appreciative that this person that you really like wants to spend it with you and, you know, wants to do something special. You know, and making time, I think, is special enough. And everything else, no expectations. So what, and this, I guess, could go for, this could go for a male or a female, but you know, what about in those days or moments before Valentine's Day when you sort of aren't sure if you should even be asking? You know, like, I've just started to know this person, mm -hmm. you know, what do I do? I, I'd like to go ahead and, you know, have dinner with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. sir. And actually, I think these must be sort of decision-making processes that happen a lot mm -hmm. in sort of along the dating um, spectrum of, oh, when should I be calling? When should mm -hmm. I not be calling? So if, say, Say I've been on sort of one date with mm -hmm. a nice gentleman, and Valentine's Day is coming up mm -hmm. next week. What, what, I think what he, do you think I should do? I think if he was interested in you, he'd be calling you. All right. And asking, you know, what are you doing on All the right. 14th? It goes. You it know? does go back to that sort of he's just not that into you thing. Or? Sure, you know, in some aspects. Also, you know, maybe if you only met him once, obviously you don't know what he's like, but That's right. you know, if he's the kind of person that likes to take control and likes to take initiative, then absolutely let him, because right. that's just gonna make the whole Valentine's Day much happier and, and much more meaningful. And if he's the type of person that may not be taking initiative, there's nothing mm. wrong with saying, you know, why don't we do this? Like, wouldn't it be fun if we could like have a, go have a casual dinner? All right, and I, maybe with the, I think, I think the um, worry would be probably for either side that you're um, trying to make something serious, you know, trying to make it sort of a, a sort of a high stakes type of date on Valentine's Day. Right, but I think you're just trying to get to know each other, and it's, you know, if you think of it, it's just another day. It's just then, another day. And no expectations, then that wonderful dinner, the second date, doesn't really have to be on the 14th. It can, you know, I think it, when it happens, it happens. So when you want it to be. I'm also hearing maybe it makes sense not to, to worry too much about it or put too much pressure on yourself. Yeah, I think it just works out the way it's supposed to when you kind of, you know, take three steps back and think of it in a little bit more of a bigger picture. Well, what about for a married couple, maybe, or, or a couple that's been together for a while? What types of things could they do to spice up Valentine's Day? I think because they have the history, the history becomes the spice. The hist you should make the history the spice. You know, maybe go into it with a theme that you both are gonna write down, you know, all the things that you thought of about the other person on the first date, you know, and share. And, you know, turn off your phones and have a wonderful date sharing about something. Or you're both gonna, you know, write three things that you've, you know, done for somebody, you know, that they've done for you that you really appreciate and, you know, you were so happy. I say that is an excellent idea, mm -hmm. making the history, like using the time together, be it at dinner or, or you know, whatever one decides mm -hmm. to do, to intentionally, you know, think about the sort of the good things mm -hmm. and, and the things that have been shared, all that, all that makes that relationship yes. special and unique. That's excellent advice. I don't think I've ever heard that really? before. <laughs> As, do, you, do you have some other thoughts for, for folks looking to... Um, you know, to make the holiday special? 
Um, well, I think there's two ways, you know, spending money and mm -hmm. not spending money. You know, if you're going to spend money, then there's ob the obvious, right? Sunset, you know, from a helicopter or a nice private oh. chef, oh. you know, coming to your home. She said the obvious. This sounds, <laughs> <like> very, <laughs> this or, sounds very exciting. You know, just a, a nice dinner somewhere. And, you know, it's nice to do be able to do those things, but I don't think it's always necessary. And there's so many romantic ideas that people can do on Valentine's Day without spending too much money. We live in Hawaii. Any place is going to be a romantic location if, you know, two people truly care about each other and you want to make the other person happy and you go into it together, like you wake up super early, go watch the sunrise because sunset is, you know, the usual thing, but, you know, go yeah, watch the sunrise together. To do or, something. you know, go to the location where you first fell in love and have a picnic there. Or just simple things. It's a, they sound simple, but it, you know, these are, I, I don't think, things that would necessarily, you know, come to mind. Mm -hmm. and, and it's also, I think, probably nice if one can think of that and, and um, you know, make it, well, actually, I was going to say make it into a surprise, mm -hmm. but I, could, I think there are probably ups and downsides <laughs> <laughs> to try and make something a surprise. What I'm really hearing and, and, and liking is that it's that communication. It's that willingness to sort of be intent, you know, be intentional. Like, let's mm -hmm. talk about it. Let's sure. not fret mm -hmm. about what we're going to do on Valentine's. Yes. Like, hey, I suggest we this, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to make it into some sort of fairy tale. Absolutely. And, and having too many expectations. I think it has to be that way because the whole purpose for the people that I assist, they're looking for love, and the way to get that is by being open and honest with yourself as well as with the other person but also making yourself a little vulnerable i think that's really important to see whether you know something can ha happen well wow our time has flown by um how can someone get in in touch with with you guys if they're interested in your services um, i think the easiest way would be to call us um, our telephone number is 808-923-4333, and I think that's the easiest way, and um, please ask for me. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much, Amy. And thank you for joining us um, on this special edition of Power Up Hawaii, focusing on love and dating in advance of Valentine's Day.